G'day guys, Lemon Eating Cow here, and today I am back playing Dragon's Dogger, Dark Arisen. Uh, we're going to be doing something a little bit different today. You might notice that my uh, my character looks slightly different. Um, well, she's a female now, so um, yeah, I would say pretty bloody different. Uh, <laughs> I am actually level... Um, what level am I? Uh, very low level. Um, I'm level 4. I have just finished the encampment quest, like at the very start of the game. And pretty much the purpose of this stream is, um, is pretty much I'm gonna head straight over to Bitter Black Isle now and uh, see how far we can get. I can't promise you a perfect run, but for anyone that's kind of thinking, man, um, I don't know what to do with Bitter Black Isle. Do I have to wait way, way, way until end game to get over there and all these type of apprehension type of uh, worried questions. But I'm gonna show you that you can pretty much go over that uh, pretty much any time. Um, of course, the lower level you are, the harder, harder it's gonna be, but it's definitely doable with a few conditions. So um, I have sold, if you've watched my video on my gold guide, I have sold the monocle. So I have bought a um, a few different pieces of equipment, but they're very low level stuff. I've enhanced a few things. I'm wearing the DLC equipment that everybody gets in their storage. Again, if you've watched my video on the 300k gold, you would have seen that. So I'm wearing nothing fancy at all, apart from this DLC-ish type of stuff. Um, and also because I sold my, um, my monocle for the 300k, I was able to buy a whole heap of uh, throw blasts and that's gonna be pretty important for this farming method. Also, I would uh, probably advise buying a fair amount of um, uh, green, green varish or warish, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, I'll put some in the bank as well. Um, I would say, I don't know, 50 or so, I guess. I'll go 60, whatever. Um, and that's about it. So we've got a bunch of that, um, the throw blasts and my armor, and that's really going to be about it. Of course, if you can hire some pretty high level pawns, it's going to help you out a lot here. But if you can't, then it's, um, it's not going to be a really big deal because you're going to be doing pretty much suicide runs anyway. So... So, if you don't know, to get um, Bitter Black Isle to actually show up, all you have to do is go back to Carcidus. Uh, I think it's Carcidus, yeah. Uh, and then you stay till nightfall. It's important that you're at nightfall, and it's important that you've already cleared the quest at the encampment, where you uh, fight against a um, fight against a uh, an ogre there. You'll you'll know the quest, especially if you've done it before. You'll know the quest. So uh, after that, you'll be able to. Sp summon your pawn as well, uh, create your pawn and then summon them in, and then that's the point that you can come back to this city and uh, and venture over to the Bitter Black Isle. So if you come out here at night time, you'll get a short little cutscene, and this uh, woman will appear down at the pier, but for copyright reasons, I uh, skipped that one. So um, yeah, so we're gonna head over to the Bitter Black Isle now and uh, get it done. Again, I'm only level four and right at the start of the game. This is actually a good way if you want to change your vocation before reaching Grand Sorin, because there is a vocation change chick over there. You have, I would take you there now. Blah, 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 blah. But anyway, I'm going to use this opportunity when cutscenes and stuff are kicking in to uh, talk to you guys there in chat. So, hello everybody in chat. I ask you. Um, I'm skipping all these things here. Uh, I'll just take a sec. Mark Gordon, hello mate. I'm sorry you have to work. <laughs> Donovan Soul, hello. Um, Michael Eden, hey mate. Uh, who else we got? Anna Juby, g'day mate. Um, six sticks, steak six, six steak sticks. Blah, 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 blah. Um, <laughs> Sarah Hips, hello Sarah. Sarah also said that she wanted to be a moderator, so there you go, Sarah. Thank you very much for the help. Uh, Cloud Gaming, g'day mate, good to see you back. And Ghost Aspire, hello. Oh, Nickaboo2, 32. And Toastus, hello Toastus. Septimus as well, and Crash Spike. Hello guys. Anyway, um, I'll have a look. Shut up, woman, shut up. 
Um, so we will have a look at exactly what I'm going to be taking down in there. Um, let us go. So I bought 200 throw blasts. If you can afford more, then buy more because you are definitely going to use heaps. Um, but maybe leave a little bit in reserve for stuff like um, Grinvarish and stuff like that. Uh, because it can get a little bit sketchy down in there. So uh, you're definitely going to need some healing items, especially with us being this low. I'm really unsure how well it is going to go. I haven't gone down here this early before. I mean, it could all go to shit straight away, but uh, we will see. To start off with, I'm going to take... Uh, I'll probably take about... Just before I get heavy, really. Um, about 65. We're going to be trying to run past as many things as we can. It may take us a few runs because we're going to, like, increasingly get better gear. I'm not sure how long I'll do this for, but we'll have a look anyway. Uh, the other important thing about this girl, you can actually change vocations. Um, once you've reached level 10, character level 10, all the vocations will unlock here. So it's actually a pretty good way to um, unlock your vocations early rather than getting to Grand Soren. So, yeah. Otherwise, I don't really have anything else to show off. So um, we'll get straight into it. It's um, probably a good idea before you go down to check this notice board because although you think, oh man, I'm not going to achieve any of these too early, uh, we will probably get... Well, we'll get two of the done... Um, We'll get two of them done pretty much uh, in this run, so. There's always a large coin purse there too, which is 3,500 coin, which is always bloody handy. There's a few items around the place here if you run around and pick them up, but nothing all that fancy, really. Oh, also, I forgot to mention, which is quite important. Uh, you can actually get, there is going to be some Liftstones DL in your inventory, I would recommend bringing those because uh, they are the way to teleport back to this uh, this type of hub. So, yeah. Let's save it and we'll see what goes. Do they call wrenches spanners in Australia too? Yeah, they do, man. Uh, not wrenches, no. Well... Yeah, we've got a. I would say a wrench is more like a like a monkey wrench or a um, a uh, man. I forgot the word. It's been way too long since I've worked in construction. What's the other word for monkey wrench? There's like a more a technical name for it. I don't even remember. I'm not even gonna try. It's not gonna work. Um, I'm gonna have a look at the chests. I'm not gonna hit on all the chests, but I'm gonna go over like the kind of the more important the type of ones um, but generally we're going to be running past pretty much everything see you later doggies now if you can f I'll turn my music down if you can afford um, wow I can't even break thingies straight away crates straight away <laughs> if you can afford extra um stamina regen things then by all means do it but otherwise it's not really a big deal so i guess i'll show you the other way um you can just jump down the balcony there but most of the time you splat at the bottom so you don't really want to be doing that with like no health so instead oh, watch out for the snakies here see you later snackies all right uh pretty much your pawns are probably going to die so you don't want to bother with them all that much. Here we got death spawning. Every time you come here for the first time, death will spawn. Do not try and fight him. He will obliterate you. He will absolutely destroy you. So don't even mess with it. So once you've done, run down through that courtyard, uh, you can see the way that we came in here is down here. Just skip straight through the courtyard. Usually I kind of hit this spot up here because there's actually a pretty good source of gold here if you're if you're looking for a bit of an extra source of gold. And it's important to note that all these items, if you go back to the Carcidus, uh, which you can do at that lady that we talked to at the start, and you can rest for three to seven days. Three days for items and then seven days for important chests and bosses. Uh, all the stuff will respawn. So um, 
you can farm this over and over again for money or whatever you want. Now these chests will be always, um, the chests with these designs will usually have the most important items in them. You can use the God's Bane if you have them. Did you just open that shit? He took... Hmm. <laughs> you can use the God's Bane in front of them. All you have to do is save your game and then you can God's Bane in front of them, kill yourself and retry. Or if you've got a lot of time on your hands and you don't have the God's Bane, you can simply save... Uh, out of the game and quit. Um, you do that before your dickhead pawn steals the item, um, usually. But anyway, um, we'll just leave him. He can have it. <laughs> but yeah, usually you save before you pick up the uh, the item, and then if you don't get what you want, you can uh, re-roll it basically by reloading your game. Yeah, Rook is. What a he's got a punny name, but that's about the only thing intelligent about him. So otherwise, the the resource I'm using is on the um, the Dragon's Dogma wiki. It's going to have maps of all of these. Um, every single one of these uh, maps is on the Dragon's Dogma wiki, and it'll show you what chests are where, what they drop in them, and everything. Now this is the um, Arisen that is wandering the bit of Black Isle and he will actually be one of your quests just to talk to him. Uh, you can rarify your gear here. If you have any uh, Dragonforge gear with the red dragon on it, you, he'll actually boost it above that. So you can talk to this guy here. He also manages store, stored items. Um, you can learn and set skills and you can actually buy some pretty decent gear off him as well. As well as um, healing items. Like these healing items uh, increases maximum health, maximum stamina, stamina, and health to the whole party, stuff like that. So he's actually a really good source of items. He also has really good weapons as well, and armor and everything. So he's actually pretty good source for stuff early on in the game. You can run right over here at the start of the game and just uh, loot off him. So I believe we'll finish a quest just for just for talking to him. There you go. We've leveled up. We got 12,000 experience just for doing that. So. Easy, easy as. Now there'll be items scattered all over here. There's nothing too important in here until we get a Moonbeam Gem, uh, which we'll do a little bit later on. Uh, otherwise, there's a few... You can kill the lamb... Oh, sorry, the, the deer for their meat and their pretty good stamina restorations. But otherwise, there's a few chests around here. Nothing too important. The chest over here. But usually, when I'm first playing through, I try and go into all the chests because Rift Crystals is going to be pretty much the thing that's going to hold you back when you're looking at purifying bit of black items and things like that. But generally, if you have a pawn out there in the world and it's getting hired, then um, Rift Crystals shouldn't be too much of a problem. Also, I should have noted, but it's a good thing to bring a pickaxe down here because there's quite a lot of ore and stuff that you can pick up and mine. Um... Yeah, but usually I hit all the chests here. You can pretty much just head around the outside of the um, of this little arena thing and you'll get what you need. Uh, let's drop this stuff because I don't really need it. I'm still heavy. Oh well, we'll drop that as well. God damn, I'm still heavy. Well, that's probably good. Get rid of the rusted stuff. Ah, that's better. That's way better. What do we get? We just got a bit of black gear. So the bit of black, whenever you get a bit of black thing, uh, they you can't actually use them. They are just a, a, for now, they're a key item or an other item. You have to take them back to the woman that we talked to at the start and she'll actually purify them. But we'll go through that a little bit later. So these doors here, you can notice these doors, uh, there should be, I think, seven of them. Seven doors. You actually need a moonbeam gem to open these up, and each behind them they'll have pretty powerful items um, that I, they don't respawn. To get them to respawn, you have to actually hard reset the game, which is a bit of a pun in itself. But I made a whole video on that, and that is my Ring of Perseverance video, so you can check that out if you need to. Okay, so um, also a good place here is to hit up the chest down the bottom here. Uh, careful not to drop all the way, otherwise you will die. 
Um, and we're gonna hope that we don't get a man eater just yet. Wakestone shards. Again, you you don't have to hit any of these chests. Um, I mean, like um, you don't have to loot any of these chests. I just do it when I'm first playing because I'm trying to collect resources and stuff like that. But yeah. This one is either a lift stone or it is a bunch of rift crystals. So, or rift shards, or what are they called? Rift crystals? Yeah, rift crystals. So, um, that is a one I usually hit when I'm starting first off. Sorry, I'm a bit being a bit loose with the chat. Um, yeah, I'm just talking too much right now. <laughs> ah, g'day, Ilioi. Ilius? Sorry, mate. Hello. So for the first time here, the door in the middle will actually be locked. We're going to have to get a void key to unlock it. And the way you get it is by going in this direction. So you have to go here, but the key here or the door here is actually locked. And you can see here are the dead ends are where we need to use the uh, moon meme gems. But we will go over and get a void key now. Um, this part is going to involve pretty much us running like little girls from pretty much everything because... Um, they can do some pretty, pretty big damage to us here. So we're heading into now the Ward of Regret. Uh, here, if you can have some skeleton keys on you, there's a couple of items that you can get that I won't be able to get access to because I don't have skeleton keys. These are actually shattered um, rift stones. You can repair them if you have enough rift crystals. It's not really advised to do it. I wouldn't really bother with this one particularly. Um, but it can be handy if you're finding you're having a bit of uh, trouble progressing through. So I'm just running past these guys. It's no big deal. Usually back here, um, if you run past those guys, they usually have a skeleton key in this chest. So that can help you unlock the door back here, which I'm actually going to go and do. And my rook is dead. But I don't like rook anyway, so I don't care too much. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I usually open this first chamber because one of them can have uh, pretty decent equipment in here, I think. You can get a cape from one of them. We'll see if I'm lucky enough to get it. We got some bit of black gear. And no, we didn't get anything good from it. But we did get bit of black gear, which actually you can purify or identify and sometimes it can become pretty powerful rings. So I'll just show you a quick um, little map. We came through here, through the uh, the Dusk Moon Tower, and now we're proceeding up to this bit. Now this bit, I usually, this is really actually good for farming experience pretty early on, as long as you can survive this bit. So often the, um, the chest here is actually a mimic or what they call a man-eater in Dragon's Dogma. Um, Sometimes if you stand close to it for long enough, it'll actually come out by itself if it is indeed a man-eater. But if you loot the chest, it'll actually grab you and try and kill you. So we'll save it just before we do that. But yeah. Yeah, Rick, Rick, Rook totally deserved that. Um, Rook totally deserved to get killed then. He, he was asking for it. <laughs> Okay, so I don't know if this is a Mimic. It doesn't seem like it, or a uh, Man-Eater, rather. Yep, it is, actually. So it looks like we're actually going to die on this one. <laughs> Lucky I saved it, huh? So they're going to grab you. You have to wiggle out by pressing the L button or wiggling the left stick around. You can actually heal through it sometimes. Um, we'll see. We don't have enough... I don't think we have enough health to survive it, but... We'll see. We'll try to because it's uh, quite a good source of Rift Crystals and uh, experience if you can survive it. So we'll give it a shot. Let's go. Usually if you have a decently level pawn, they'll be able to assist you and knock it out. But my pawn is uh, absolutely useless right now. So we can't expect too much help from them. <laughs> it's not very efficient at all, but you'll see... Hopefully we'll get some whoops. Hopefully we'll get some good rewards off it because these guys actually have a chance of giving you about twenty or thirty thousand rift crystals actually. So what you're gonna do, this is where your throw blasts are gonna come into use. And you're gonna have to be pretty quick on it. If you see them casting a red circle or a 
um, uh, like a spell, don't stand in it. It'll kill the crap out of you like almost instantly. So what I do is load up on the throw blasts and uh, you're just going to want to chuck it at this dude. And most of the time it'll stop them casting, which is good. But you want to chain throw it at them as much as you can. Crap. But try not to let them hit you because it's likely they'll kill you in one hit. So, um, yeah. There we go. I think we killed it. And 11,000 experience for killing it, which is great. It also gives gold ore, a uh, bit of black gear. But sometimes it can actually drop rift crystals. I've had it drop... Uh, about 25,000 rift crystals at once and it's a really good source of experience and items and everything and this chest usually which is right here pretty much most of the time will have a man eater so it's a really good source of items and experience and everything so yeah <laughs> did you hear rook then i cannot move <laughs> oh man so there we go, a bit of black novelty. Novelties can sometimes, they, as they say, they're novelties. Sometimes they can transfer to some pretty cool skills, but otherwise, nothing too impressive. These guys, you can take them out pretty easily with a throw blast. Um, if they don't absolutely destroy you. But, judging by the damage we take, we're just going to run straight past them. The pawn will take care of it anyway. <laughs> Loot what you can, but don't worry about it all that much. And not, not many of these chests are actually all that worthwhile at the moment. But we'll hit them up anyway. The biggest danger at the moment is possibly hitting a man-eater chest. Because they're going to wreck you. Absolutely wreck you. So, yeah. Actually, pawns don't... If there's a man-eater in the chest, the pawn won't open it. I haven't seen a man-eater... Well... In my experience, I haven't seen a, um, a pawn open a man eater chest, so, yeah. So there should be only one way you can proceed through that map back there, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Uh, this place here can be a real run killer. Um, this giant here, you, you do not want your pawns to attack because it will really mess up your day. Uh, you don't want him active at all, you really don't. We'll just check what map we're in now. Actually, we're in the Midnight Helix. I just forgot the name of it. Um, and this is where we'll be getting that uh, Void Key that we were talking about before. I'll just check if there's any really good gear here. Um, I can't remember. Oh, I Bit of Black Armor Level 1 and Bit of Black level Weapon Level 1, which is pretty important. I'll just check where they are. I know up the top you can get a Bit of Black Armor, but also... Okay, I see. Uh, also, we're going to head through the back and we'll see if we can get lucky with uh, any weapons. Make sure you run here through here quickly because there's actually mages all over the shop. If you go up past the giant, he's on your right there. Uh, you can go through the back and there'll actually be some... There's a chance of getting bit of black armor or bit of black weapons here. But there's also going to be some little jumpy dudes jumping out which are hella annoying so just be careful of them there we go bit of black weapon level one i'm actually going to save it if i can just in case i die but we're lucky that we got the bit of black weapon level one because the weapons are really quite powerful at this stage so now we'll have a look in here oh we got the owl mace already which is pretty pretty bloody good we'll avoid these guys because they're just going to eat us alive um get out of there don't worry about them. I'm a bit heavy at the moment. Can I drop anything? Yeah, let's drop. Gold ore is... Uh, let's give it to Minky, actually, or Meowie. Um, and we'll discard that. I don't think we're still not going to do it. Anyway, as you can see, the Almace is... Uh, actually, we'll check it out a bit later, but it's uh, actually really, really powerful. So once you've got those two chests, one should be either an armor or a weapon most of the time. Again, you can save it before then and try your luck. Uh, we're going to take on these mages, which can be absolute pains in the ass. They are the worst, man. The worst. So we're going to heal up. But you just have to hit them a couple of times and they stop casting. So 
not that big of a deal. There's a few chests on most levels, so I'm going to grab a couple of those chests. But they're not the real problem. There is Gola, um, gargoyles in here as well, which can be real bastards because they knock you off the edge of the arena, like all the way off the edge, and uh, can kill you in one hit. There they come now. Looks like they're going to do it. <laughs> I think he's going to kill me right now. Oh no, he tried. Oh well. It's a bit hairy. I'm very low level for here, so... Um, yeah. Even if you had, like, another 5 or 10 levels on me... I thought he was going to knock me off then. It would be a lot easier, but those gargoyles... are shit. They are terrible. Oh man, no stamina at this level. <laughs> None. You can actually use throw... What the... <laughs> I leveled up just as I got hit and managed to avoid death. That is amazing. Wow. Anyway, you want to proceed past the dudes here. We have no more things to increase our stamina, which is not good. Anyway, jump across here and you'll have the void key right up at the top of the map. But it's very treacherous getting past the gargoyles and the mages and everything like that. But yeah, it is it is worth it. We'll see. This guy's going to make it trouble for us. This chest is usually worth looting because most of the time it has bitter black gear or it has bitter black armor in it, I think. We'll try and kill this guy. Good old throw blasts. There we go, good experience too. And now if this dude would just stop casting. There we go. Oh, dude, get out of there. Bit of black novelty, level three. So already we're getting level three bit of black novelty. So that's pretty good. So because we're pretty low on restoratives, what I'm gonna use is one of our lift stones. Now you should have picked up a couple, but if not, you can use your lift stone DL and that'll take us back to the entrance which is pretty good for now. Otherwise, you can backtrack back to the Duskmoon Tower, so, yeah. Oh, meow he's back. G'day, mate. <laughs> uh, but otherwise, uh, we can see now there's some extra quests we can pick up. I would pick them up as soon as you see little notes here. I'd pick them up just in case you end up clearing that thing. Um, and at this point... We can, if we choose to, if we have enough risk Rift Crystals, we can actually purify the gear that we've found. So we'll purify... We'll purify like one of those. That'll do. We'll wait and see if we get any more. Um, but generally these things purify. The novelties uh, can be like restoratives. Uh, sometimes they turn into skills that you can actually use, like augments for your class. Also an Elite Lantern, which is pretty good, but most of the time they're kind of restoratives and stuff. Excuse me. And then we have the Bitter Black Gear, which turns into rings, which usually have skills or uh, stats on them, which are pretty, pretty useful. Any, um, any questions so far, ladies and gentlemen? I hope it is clear enough. I know I am ignoring chat a little bit, but... Um, yeah, anyway. <laughs> uh, otherwise, I'm going to change... I think I can change my vocation now, if I so wish. I don't really need to, but anyway. Uh, let's see if we can get some augments up in here to make us a little bit stronger. Uh, not really. Oh, that'll give us a bit more health, so we'll do that. Um, nothing else, really. We're not going to be fighting anything in this run. Like, nothing, so... Um, I think that's pretty much it for her. Actually, let's, uh, let's deposit all our extra guff, huh? Uh, we may as well keep the pank here on us, uh, just in case we get hit with anything. Um, let's get rid of this. We're pretty much going to get rid of everything. I would keep a jewel of time on you just in case, and, uh, we'll have a look at that later on. Skeleton key. We'll get rid of these for now. If you can have some wake stones, it's going to make everything a lot easier. Now, the Almace that we found before, um, we could equip it right now. We could, but 
it doesn't tell you this, but because it's such a high level, if we equip it now, every swing that we take will actually reduce our stamina. So it's not a good idea to equip it at this level. Again, we just finished another quest for uh, purifying a bit of black gear or a bit of black item. No, I don't want to do that. Let's get rid of that sword because we can't use it right now at all. It'll just kill our stamina completely. It's not even worth it. Oh, I think that feral cape is actually a lot better for us, so we might put that on actually. Blah, 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 blah. Did we have an extra armor piece? No, we didn't. Uh, yeah, it's a <laughs> it's a little bit better anyway. So whatever. Um, and what we're gonna do is because now I've got a little bit of extra cash to work with, I'm just gonna return to Casadas. Uh, and buy some extra healing items. If you ever run out of healing items, all you have to do is return to the town and buy some more. Uh, I suppose I could drop change to um, Strider for the double jump and um, dodge. That's actually that's a pretty good idea, actually. I find that they get killed a lot easier, though. I don't, I don't know if it's just my luck or not, but I do get killed a lot easier. I should have a fair bit of... Discipline, I think, because I beat a uh, few enemies. I would say I would, anyway. My biggest thing right now is uh, stamina, really. I don't know whether I'm going to be able to take out the... Um... Hey, I've already got 63. Ah, oh, it's in my bank. Uh, I totally forgot I bought those. Anyway, let's buy another 40. We can afford it. We're ballers now. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. Bling! Uh, what else is I going to buy? Nothing, really. If I could, I would probably buy some, um, stamina restoration stuff, but it's not a big deal. While we're here, we'll also buy more throw blasts, because I'm going to bloody need them. There we go, that'll do. Ah! You lack discipline. That's my problem. <laughs> Uh, anyway, if you want to return to the um, return to the bit of Black Isle, you can again gonna have to sleep until the morning. This account that I'm using now is not my main account, so it's not even connected to the internet. So I can't even get my porn out there. So yeah, oh well. You can never have too much throw blast. Throw blast is god. It is amazing. Um, okay, so it's night time, so we'll head back there. But yeah, I don't, I don't know if this is a good way to present this. Maybe I could break this down into a few tips, but this is pretty much what I do. People have been saying, man, I'm, I'm totally lost in Bitter Black Isle. I don't know what to do, but... Um, the biggest resource that you can use is the Dragon's Dogma Wiki. It's, it's fantastic. It's really good. Actually, I'll link you what I'm using now to get my way through. Uh, just give me a sec. I'm just getting back to the the main thingy. There you go. Uh, if you use this link here, it actually shows pretty much every map. All you do is click on the name of the map, and it'll show you all the chests, everything you can loot from, loot from it, everything. It's it's a really great resource. Although I don't have daggers, so I won't be able to use the uh, the jump though, will I? Unless they give you rusty daggers. If they don't, I'm shit out of luck. Whatever, I'm gonna keep going on as this guy. I don't. doesn't really phase me much. Or this girl, rather. So, once we're back. Oh, goddamn, I gotta get some healing items. Once we're back, we're gonna head back to the. Um, we're gonna head back to the. what's it called? The Dusk Moon Tower, and we're gonna use the, uh, the void key that we found. G'day, Nuke! I'm sorry again if I'm avoiding anyone in chat, it's just, uh, um, I'm in deep right now. We're not combining shit. We're withdrawing. Let's take, uh, I'd say a fair, uh, I'm so heavy. I don't know why, I guess I've just got little strength, so I can't really carry all that much. God damn. We're gonna need, okay, what if... I wonder if Meowie will throw all our throw blasts. Surely she couldn't throw all of them. Surely. 
<laughs> I've just got horrible visions of her throwing like every single throw blast that we have. I could totally see it happening. Oh, man. Anyway, let's let's risk it. We'll see what happens. You gotta risk it to get the biscuit, apparently. Why? I don't understand why I'm so, so heavy, though. I guess it's all the... Oh, well. Can't, can't be helped right now. Anyway. Yeah, I'm just afraid of either the pawn dying and me not being able to access the stuff, or um, them using the throw blast, so... Anyway. All right, uh, so again, we're going back through the main... Dude, I'm way too heavy. Uh, I'm going to have to give up some of these. I know she'll probably use some of them, but hopefully it'll keep her alive. There we go. We're both very average. Uh, so we're going to run through... Death shouldn't be here this time, but there might be a Chimera, and the Chimera can do... He can destroy you as well, so... Yeah, probably... Yeah, see... Um, there you go. My pawn just used a consumable. So, it does happen. Um, yeah, we're just going to run past here. Oh, we don't have chimeras this time. We have ogres or cyclopses, so we'll run past them. My pawn is probably going to die because... <sighs> anyway, dude, come on. <laughs> All the items shouldn't have respawned. We only rest for one night, so all the items haven't respawned. But if you want to make this more efficient, I would rest three nights before you come back here, and all the items should have respawned anyway. <laughs> yeah, Fornival will be getting worried that I haven't been home, huh? Uh, I don't think this dude has anything good for us, does he? No. Anyway, here we are back at the Duskmoon Tower. And, um, yeah, so the Chimera appears after you kill Damon the first time. Damon, 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 the first time. So, um, yeah, until then, it's just the, uh, it looks like they're not so menacing enemies. So now that we've got the Void Key, we're going to use it on this little door here. And that is going to be able to, now we're going to be able to access further into the, um, into the dungeon. You don't have to, that big dude that was like locked up in the Midnight Helix, you don't have to kill him, he's completely optional. So I originally thought he was a boss, but he's uh, completely optional, pretty much. So I'll just get my maps up again and I'll see if there's anything juicy that we can get. Um, what are we looking at? So I'm just using the wiki right now on my other monitor. Uh, Vault of Defiled Truth, we'll have a look there, see if there's anything extra tasty. What, what I do is I look at the maps before I run through them uh, on the wiki and I look for bitter black items or bitter black uh, weapons or bitter black armor or something like that. It looks like there is one chest that has bitter black stuff in it or bitter black weapons. Make sure you check and the, that it is pre daemon If it says post daemon it means you have to have killed the last boss already to get access to it. So, yeah. G'day, Jackie M. Good to see you. So we have found there is one chest here, which is number uh, 16 that we want to check out. Where's number 16? All the way... It's ages away. Jesus. Okay, I see. Anyway, let's get into it. So this is the part that we're going to clear to a Moonbeam gem, uh, among other things. But generally, this part can be pretty dangerous, so... You want to keep on running through. <laughs> Don't dilly-dally through here. You get those little worm jumper things coming out there, so you can move past them. And here we have a cockatrice, which can petrify you and do horrible, nasty things to you. So I would not jump there because you'll kill all your stamina. Uh, I'm about to kill myself, I think. Get to the door. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, run straight past the cockatrice and get to the door. Um, it's really, you can get a weapon up there on the top level, but it's not all that much worth it. 
So now we are in the gutter of misery on the second floor and you're going to go upstairs and to our left is going to be the warrior's respite which is a good place to rest up but before you go in there there's often a lift stone often a lift stone there or rift crystals or a, uh, a cure all so yeah pretty good. But I really enjoy myself, I came over here as soon as I could, especially because through my playthrough, I couldn't really advance too much without live streaming. So for me, this is a really good challenge to take on early on. Month dried Harsbud, nice. Sometimes there can be gear in these two boxes, but also rift clusters, there you go. It's got 800 rift crystal, which is good. And here is a healing spring. So you can stand in that and get all your health back. Also, if you have empty flasks, you can fill them up here and it'll be free uh, healing items as well. Your pawns often don't want to get in, so you just call them up and you chuck the bastards in because it'll actually give them a regen buff, so it's worthwhile doing it. So there you go. If you have an empty flask, you can refill it. Also, another rift stone there that you can use to uh, bring your pawns back or get new ones or whatever you need to do. These actually are pretty good. They're a pretty good source of... Um, money actually i might do it just to show you the hunger platinum is good for upgrading items and uh selling it's, it's really worth quite a bit so um i probably could have hit that another time but anyway and it's good because this guy is actually a vendor so you can sell what you picked up just straight away without worrying about your um well hunger platinum's not worth that much maybe gold's worth a bit more but um yeah anyway any bit counts so that's the same dude that we met back at the Duskmoon Tower. Uh, there's a bench here, there's a lift stone. You can actually sleep here at the bench if you want to get some of your uh, health back or anything like that. Looks like we've got a few more quests to undertake. Again, take them, take them when you notice them. If you go up here, which is pretty important, just uh, up of the bed, you'll actually find a Moonbeam Gem. And that'll open the way to a pretty powerful item back at the uh, the Dust Moon Tower. But you can pretty much go back there anytime once you have that gem. So it's not a big deal to go back there right right away. If you head downstairs, there'll actually be a really good source of throw blasts. I think there's about 18 of them in total. So it's a really good way to do it. I I personally don't think it's efficient to reset the dungeon and keep coming back here just to farm these. I think it's way too much of an effort to do it it's just it's way too much so yeah i wouldn't personally bother resetting it just for that head a bit more down and you get a chest here bit of black novelty level two not too bad and we might dump off some of our stuff at this dude while we're here any novelties or anything that we've picked up uh, what are we doing deposit get rid of that stuff I uh, don't really need that. Probably don't need... That's extra weight we don't need. You can get rid of... You only need one lift stone at once because it's... Uh, you can't double teleport back or anything. Might as well get rid of that too. We're light on weight. Uh, yeah, we'll keep that. But the bit of black gear can actually weigh a little bit. So you may not want to keep too much on your, uh, on your person. Sorry for anyone that's new here. I usually interact with the chat a little bit more. I'm just trying to get through a lot of information. So, yeah. But anyway, this is a safe zone. So you can't can't really go wrong saving here. Man, n none of this is as bad as farming V2s in um, in uh, Final Fantasy XV. That, that is excruciating. So once you come out of here, we're going to now head downstairs. And this is another really good place if you wanted to try and farm... Oh, sorry, it's my pawn. If you want to try and uh, farm man-eaters again, often one of the chests down here will be a man-eater. This one, generally for me, most of the time, this will be a man-eater. Um, we'll see if we can provoke it, but often... Oh. There you go. Pretty much most of the time, your pawns won't open the chest if it is man-eater. In my experience, most of the time they will not. So, are they sexy? Let's try them on, see if they're sexy. Oh, God damn it! Let's look if they're sexy. Hmm? <laughs> they suck. 
Oh, well, they're good stats, but I wanted to be like sexy thigh highs. Anyway, um, there is one more chest behind here, which I think may also be able to be a man eater. I'm not too sure, but rift clusters anyway. Once you've checked them, you can actually head down the little uh, escape route here. Now, this is where it can get pretty hard and was a bit of a roadblock for me at the start. We'll see if we can clear it, but I don't actually like my chances too much right now. Uh, map. Where are we? We're in the gutter of misery. So I'm just going to bring out my map for that one. Sorry about that. Gutter of misery. Uh, first level underground. There's actually, I think there's some pretty good items in here. Well, the chance of some good items. The problem is a lot of the chests here have man eaters in them. So you really have to be ready with your hero lane items and, uh, just try not to die because some of them can be, uh, bastards about it basically. Uh, six, seven, eight, five, six, seven, eight. It doesn't look like we have anything too major, but I'll show you the route I usually take. I usually come up here and then go to the right. And this chest is usually pretty safe. Uh, I don't think a man eater spawns in there, but down here you'll get a lot of those jumping little dudes. Um, it looks like now he's going to just take the plunge. We'll see if we can actually take him out. Wow, um, that was probably a really bad idea. Anyway, <laughs> but you can usually, usually um, uh, I've got a bit more uh, power behind me, but anyway, we might jump down there. No, it's not going to happen. They're just going to slaughter us. So, rip Minky. Actually, we need Minky. She's got all my throw blasts. God damn it, let's try this. Maybe we can get some bounce action going. That hit? How, why wouldn't that bounce? That is annoying as hell. Anyway, let's try and jump down and use it. Oh, we got one. We got a few more. There we go. Uh, those guys are actually pretty good because they can often drop bit of black novelties as well. So you can kind of... You bitch. Uh, you can actually farm them for a bit of black novelties, so, yeah. Anyway, we'll keep moving. That doesn't fill me with confidence for the rest of it, but anyway. Yeah, we've got a few more jumpers here. So there's another two chests we can loot up here. Doop. <laughs> okay, we're not even going to mess with that shit. Minky, meowie, come on. Dude! Anyway, whatever. If she dies, she dies. So, you have to be careful around here. These two little casting eyeball things are a freaking nightmare, man. If you stay around and let them cast on you, they will kill you, pretty much. But at this point, now we're going to have Sorens attacking us as well. Um, and usually, most of the time, they'll also give you a debuff, which makes you weigh more and slow down more. So, it's a bit of a... Um, Bit of a shit one, but you just have to try and run past them. Um, yeah, Minky, I bet is... I keep calling him Minky. Meowie is back there fighting it out, I think. <laughs> of course they hold the advantage, mate. Anyway, um, pretty much just trudge past them as fast as you can. So we dropped in down here. You can go up here and loot a few chests. Uh, if you're powerful enough to take out those little leapy dudes. But generally, you want to run down here and then up through the door. I think we're pretty much coming towards the boss. I don't know whether we're going to be able to kill the boss because I don't think I'll even be able to withstand one hit from him, but we'll see how it goes anyway. Shrine of Futile Truths. I can't remember if this is it or not. I'll have a look at my map quickly. Yes, this is Gazer. I don't know whether we're going to be able to beat it because I think if I get hit like even once, I'm dead. So, uh, we'll see how it works out. We'll see how it works out. Also, if you had like higher level pawns, this whole thing would be so incredibly easy. Um, they will carry the crap out of you. 
Uh, we got enough throw blast for now. We might be okay. We might. But yeah, this is a boss, so um, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> yeah. It's a big ass eyeball. It has, I think it has petrify spells, which uh, we got a few pank here so we can get through it, but um, otherwise. What you want to do with this guy is pretty much stay beneath him if you can. Uh, avoid his tentacles at all costs. They cast spells and icicle spells and stuff on you, so they're really annoying, but um, you want to try and stay under him if you can. Minky's dead, which is not good at all. Oh, there's a macabre statue as well. If you need to, you can throw a few uh, throw blasts around. But generally you want to keep mobile because they will cast on you like all the time. I don't know if we're going to be able to kill it here. I honestly don't. I think this may, might be a little bit... A little bit too early because we're not even doing damage to these guys. Oh, god damn you. And Minky has all my throw blasts on her, which is uh, <laughs> even worse. Oh, look out, buddies. This is not good. I think they're all going to shoot icicles at me right now. Or well, lightning, is it? Yeah, lightning. Okay. You don't want to get hit by that. He does... I'm not sure what triggers his next phase. I hope it's not from killing enough tentacles. But, that was not good. Okay, we'll use a, um, here we go. Pim, pim, pim. But he should go to a stage where big tentacles start springing up from the ground. I don't know whether I'm going to be able to trigger it or not, but we'll see. I hope it's a time thing and not a amount of enemies that you can kill thing, because if that's the case, there we go. Uh, usually when those big things come up, if you're standing right underneath Gazer, they're not targeting me for some reason, which is annoying, but anyway, if you're standing right under Gazer, usually, usually they punch him in the eye and knock him out. There it goes. So we got that to trigger. It looks like it's just a time thing. And now what you want to do is when his eyeball comes out, just throw throw blasts at it. And if you can chain throw them fast enough, and do enough damage, he'll actually go into a second sun state. There we go. Bleh! And then his little eyeball pokes out. And you want to try and do as much damage as you can here. Again, this is where if you have an extra pawn, you're going to be doing a lot more damage, so it's not going to be much of an issue, but it looks like we're not going to be able to kill him straight away, but we're taking pretty much a life bar off each bomb, so it's, it's crazy. And I think, what level are we? Like, level 14, so... <laughs> it's insane, it really is. Yeah, we just... just didn't get him. So now it's a matter of surviving another... Another, um... Another phase, I guess you can call it. Uh, that wasn't too good. We've got Petrify at the moment, which is... We can survive. Luckily, we have the, uh... Yeah. If you can, if you've got some secret softeners, it would be advised to have them on you right now. Oh, hopefully you can hit him with a throw blast right now. Nah. You have to actually hit, like, his eye for it to do any damage, so... I guess that's why it's not doing it. You would think the throw blast could hit from there. Oh, well, guess not. Anyway, second phase, buddy. I'm not sure if you can actually hit him from the second tier. Like, if you go upstairs, I'm not sure. Ah, uh, this is going to be a problem, actually. Uh, we might be able to do it. We'll see. This part, if you get to this part, you have to take out these four uh, eyeballs. Otherwise, he'll cast a spell that kills everybody. I'm not really sure if you can be behind a pillar to stop it. But if you manage to stop it, his eye will pop out again, so we can get a heap of damage off on him. But it looks like I'm not actually going to be able to hit him from his current position. 
Oh no, there we go. They're just making it difficult on me. Why are they bouncing off him? Man, that is annoying. We could have killed him, like, right now. There we go. Good shit. Looks like we're gonna get the kill. There we go, you can see the power of throw blasts. They're extreme. Just extreme. There you go. And we got 93,000 experience for it, which is crazy. Just ridiculous. So, yeah, ridiculous. So yeah, you can see that's pretty much like the basics of what I want to leave. I think this is a good like basic guide for a bit of Black Isle. How long have we been streaming for? It must have been like an hour or so, huh? Ah, 56 minutes. And my pawn just died with all my throw blasts. But this is the power of throw blast. It's crazy. And I don't think... I think you saw my gameplay there. I'm not like a crazy, skilled, amazing person in this game. It's just about avoiding enemies, avoiding damage, and then exploiting the throw blasts. Like, there's nothing really majorly gaming about any of this. So, uh, I believe that pretty much anyone could do it uh, with any skill level. So, um, yeah. Whether you're still watching after an hour of this video or not is uh, a different thing. But anyway... So after you beat him, you can go through the door here and you'll actually open up a shortcut for the rest of the Bitter Black Isle. If you rest for a certain amount of time, you can actually come back and kill the eyeball and he's actually a pretty good way to level up because he's so easy to kill with the throw blasts. Uh, it's a really good way to level up actually. We'll get our little shopkeep here. Uh, down here there's an item, but I think the rats or maybe jumpers attack you? No, just the rats. Usually it's just a tome in that one, so it's no big deal, but yeah. So you get your item vendor again, but it's not really necessary. Well, I suppose if you need to sell stuff, but otherwise you can pick up this tablet here. Anything with that glowing like mist on it is a quest item for the, uh, the type of knowledge here, and it's good for experience. Uh, you can also resurrect the rift stone and get your pawns back, but it's not really necessary considering the fact if you go out this exit, you can actually go all the way back to the beginning anyway, and now you've opened up a shortcut. Just hit this lever here, and now you'll see that we'll loop right back around to the uh, the very start of the Bitter Black Isle. And there we go. Good stuff. Back here. Tis it is slow work. And she'll give you a little bit of updates every time you beat the um, bosses, but generally, yeah, nothing too fantastic. Did we pick up anything good? Let's check what we got in the bit of black. Oh, actually, I'll also talk a little bit about item manipulation, but I'm going to do a separate video on it as well, so... Anyway, let's save it, and I'll go over chat. I'll have a little bit of look through the chat, and I'll see if there's anything I uh, missed out on too much. But yeah, what do you what do you guys think? Do you think it's really easy or do you think I'm just speaking shit or what? It's it's honestly once you learn the maps at first when you're walking in, you're kinda of like, man, it's so confusing, there's so much shit going on everywhere. Have a look through those wikis, they're really helpful. And it's just about getting in there and experiencing it. But you definitely somebody said, Oh, I'm waiting till post game, but I don't think my level's high enough to go in the bit of Black Isle. You can go in here at any time. Any time. <laughs> Ilio said, um, tentacle. I thought he said testicle. I'm like, why are people talking about testicle in, in chat? What the hell am I missing? <laughs> Just spanner talk and testicle talk. All right. Um, okay, so I'm going to go over a little bit about purification now if you don't know too much about it. So usually when you get an item... Uh, when you pick up an item, a uh, a bit of black item. So say here, do we have any on our persons? No. Uh, we'll have a look at what she's got for us. So say if you pick up a bit of black weapon, when you actually pick up that weapon, the weapon that it can possibly be is pretty much locked in. Um, 
the uh you get a certain tier of weapons whether it be a high tier or a low tier when you loot this uh bit of black weapon one but you can actually change the type of weapon or armor that you will get out of these uh it only works with the bit of black weapons gears and armors but we'll have a look i'll just make i'll double check that we're saved um I'll save the game and I'll show you a different way to manipulate the type of loot that you'll get off them. So at first we're going to have a look at one something that's um, pretty easy to manipulate. So we're going to go, depending on what vocations you and your main pawn are, will determine... No, we don't want to do that. We'll determine what we get out of the, um, out of the bit of black uh, gears. Well, there you go, trophy. Uh, so at the moment we're going to request purification for that bit of black weapon and we're going to see what weapon we got. Now my class is fighter and my main pawn class is fighter so we're both a red class. So we'll see what comes out of this one. Threaded cudgel. Um, there you go. It's a blunt weapon so it looks like it's going to be a um, most likely only be able to use by a fighter or maybe a mystic knight or something like that. And when you purify weapons, they go to your storage. So we'll have a look in the storage. Um, where is it? Here, yeah, well, actually, it's usable by Mystic Knight, which is... Oh, I see. Um, it's actually... Yeah. All right. Anyway. <laughs> um, so that time we got the Threaded Cudgel, which is used by the Mystic Knight, which is a red and a blue class, which I guess was determined by the fact that Miaoi was actually... A blue class when we looted the item but anyway um, if I was to again load up my game and then purify that weapon as both red classes we should see the same item drop again but we're gonna have a look now we're gonna switch over classes and we'll see what happens to that item what the crap no I don't wanna g'day mr. Percy's how you doing mate Ah, uh, Zeus, as a new class, what I recommend? Um, I would say fun-wise, Strider is pretty good. But it really, honestly, mate, it comes down to personal taste. Like, as long as you enjoy the class, you're going to have fun. Every class is pretty good. But Strider is kind of like mid-ground. They get good gains in all their stats and things like that. So you can't go too wrong with them. So I'm going to change, right now my pawn is a uh, mage, and I'm going to change my vocation to also be mage. And we'll see if our item changes at all. No, we don't want to change anything. Ooh, we're naked as well. So now we will go to request purification and purify that bit of black weapon again, and hopefully it actually changes it. There we go. We get an unfettered claw which is a staff. So you can see by, depending on what class you and your main pawn are when you purify items, there's a chance that you'll get different items. I'll just show you one more time. Actually, we'll have a look at the item first, but I'll show you one more time just to really confirm what's going on here. Uh, change skills and no, manage, withdraw. So you can see it's uh, mainly for the blue classes, like every one of those has a tinge of blue in it. Um, and now we'll just reload the game once more and we'll have a look what happens if we're both, uh, both the yellow classes. Oh. Yeah, Mystic Archer is kind of like a, like an end goal type of uh, build. Usually you would build your character as like a mage or a sorcerer to build up their magic um, magic damage or maybe level them as something else and then when your stats are where you want them you'd become a magic archer basically. But it's really up to you how to play the game. You're not going to break, make or break the game. I wouldn't bother with it too much Ethan. If, if it's your first playthrough, forget about it. Don't even worry about it, really. Min-maxing is not... I've been playing the game, you've seen me... If you've seen me on stream, I'm really not paying attention to my min-max gains at all. And I'm doing fine in the game. 
I'm cheesing it, but I'm doing fine. So this time we're going to go both uh, Striders. Yerp. And we'll change our Derpy Derp here to Strider. And we'll see what happens when we uh, request the purification of that weapon. We should see that it'll be coming out a yellow or a yellow mix item. There we go, Dragon's Pain, which is actually a pretty good dagger. So yeah, when you're purifying items, it does matter what class you and your main pawn are. I keep going. We'll go manage, withdraw. Um, where are they? There they are. Dragon's Pain. So you can see all of those class combinations down there have yellow in them. So uh, we can see how the classes impact the weapons you get. So if you, at first, if you don't get a weapon that you want, even if you can use it, but it's not what you want, then switch out classes and maybe you can get something you want. But no matter how many times you purify it, if you're the same class combination, it will only be able to ro roll a certain number of items. You won't be able to roll like every different uh, level one black weapon or bit of black weapon from it. So the loot table is somewhat restricted outside of your classes. Uh, also, before we did pick up a, um, let's put on those dragon. No, we don't have them. Uh, we did pick up, you saw that wisp on one of those tablets that we found. Every time you find one of those tablets, you come here and you read about what it's done. Uh, I think there's 17 in total. 12, there you go. Each time you unlock one, you'll actually get experience for doing it. So make sure you check back and read this thing every now and then when you've picked up those slabs and that's an, another source for uh, XP. So you can see we haven't been actively farming anything at all. Not one thing. And we are already up to level 22 by doing, like, nothing. So, really good. Really good. Um, William Johnson. I don't know exactly when the Blast Arrows show up, but it could possibly be when you first get the Grand Soren, as uh, Ilios says. Um, yeah, just keep checking back at the um, Camellia's Apothecary in um, Grand Soren, and you might be able to find it there. I don't know. One Abyssal Eye. That might come off the... Um, complete your assignment. Uh, that might come off the... Uh, the Gazer. I'm not sure. Anyway. Um, what we're going to do, I'm pretty much going to... I'll show you just the one thing. If you go back through now, your shortcut will be open forever. Well, until you beat Damon. Um, that's a shortcut that we came out before. So if you want to, you can go back in there and then you can proceed further down into the rest of um, Bit of Black Isle. But if you want to reset all the chests that we've already seen, uh, I'll show you just a couple of things. So if you want to reset the chests, you just come back, uh, go to Return to Karsadas. Uh, Lemon, am I going to do the guide on Fiendish, Fiendish Essence and the Bitter Black Arenas? I'm not really sure what I'm going to do as far as guides go yet, Luna. Um, I'm going to see what I get out before the 27th, because once the 27th comes out, the channel is going to kind of shift towards more Assassin's Creed type of stuff. So I'll try and get out as many guides as I can, but I'm really not going to promise anything at this point. So back in Carcidus, uh you can actually... Rest, uh, I think resting for three days makes the chest respawn. And if you rest for seven days, I think it makes the um, bosses respawn, I think. But we're going to rest for seven for good measure. Um, if you want to do this really fast and you don't want to sit through, usually if you're on, on online mode, uh, every time that you rest, you're going to have to get your pawn. It's going to like update and everything. So just turn to offline mode and this should be a way faster process. The unlimited blast arrows come after you talk to the Duke, says just don't bother. Okay, good stuff, man. And Luna says bosses only respawn post daemon. Okay. Uh, the more you know, I guess. Alright, I suppose that helps out noobs anyway, or noob people in the uh, 
in the thing. So I guess resting three days will be enough for us anyway. But let us move on. So I've rested, say, three or seven days. Oop, I, I gotta make sure it's nightfall. Uh, let us rest till nightfall and then we'll head back down to the docks. If you have an etern eternal fairy stone, you can actually fairy stone back to the, uh, back to Bitter Black Isle at a point. But, uh, we're coming around about the end. I'll show you a couple more things, but, um, actually I'll show you a really good thing now that we've, I'll show you a method for farming level two Bitter Black armor, I think it is which is really quite powerful, or weapons, I believe. But it requires you to beat the gazer first to open up that, uh, that little, um, <sighs> the, the shortcut that we opened up before. You're going to need to have that open to do what we're about to do. Uh, what I will do is, um, I might change into some... Put some daggers on. I can't even use them. They're actually... If you use weapons above your level, uh, the wiki will tell you more about this. I can't tell you the exact specifics because it's way too complicated and it's different for every item, but the wiki will tell you how to... Um, why you can't use items that are above your level. So, yeah. I don't think I have any... Do I have any discipline points right now? Whatever, I don't care. Uh, let's equip some items and we'll get down there again. We already got that on. I want to be able to at least take one hit when I'm down there. Because <laughs> we're about to go back in. Uh, we're not going to do too much more. I'll show you where the last couple of chests are. And then that's pretty much, uh, pretty much the end of the stream. But, yeah. Let's get some of these, rid of some of these that I'm carrying. Get rid of that. That one too. And that. Um, I'm going to take some throw blasts just in case. But otherwise, we're not going to take all that much. Oh, moonbeam gem. I've already got a video on what to do with the moonbeam gem, so I'm not going to go over that now. Um, because that should be pretty easy to look up. Uh, we'll take some more throw blast just in case. We'll go a bit of average. Anyway, right now I'm going to show you how you can possibly farm... Uh, I think it is Bitter Black Weapons level 2 or possibly level... F yeah, Bitter Black Weapons or Bitter Black Armor. And also Standard Armor as well. Um, so what we're going to do is go back in the shortcut that we unlocked before, which is here. We'll call it the... Uh, the gazer shortcut and we're pretty much going to be running past a lot of enemies as well um uh running past all the enemies as well and uh yeah pretty much just getting to one spot there are quite a few items along the way but i'm not going to go too deep into them i think i've covered enough for like a basic guide for now so we're pretty much just going to run past them So we took the other entrance, which is not the gazer. It should be pretty obvious which that, with which that one is. Again, we got a death spawn, so run the crap away. Do not fight him. He will kill you. He will most definitely kill you. Um, it's probably a good idea to have stamina at this point too. I think he's... Could he kill me? Oh, he's... Don't kill me, bro. <laughs> oh, dude. What if he does? Yeah, there goes Meowie using Throw Blast again. This is also... Most of the time I find that's a Man-Eater as well, so be careful of that one. Otherwise we're just gonna... Well, I have no... Why is my stamina so, so low? It feels like even worse than it was before. Am I wearing high-level equipment that I sh... Oh, I know why. It's because I'm wearing the goddamn Dragon Pain. <laughs> Did you see that shit? Uh, <laughs> zero deaths, people. Zero deaths. 
Ah, <laughs> uh, that is funny. That is really quite funny. Um, <laughs> anyway, let's try that again, huh? So you can see it is quite easy to die, but uh, that's the first time we've done it. So yeah. Wow, what a punt, man. What a punt. <laughs> that was totally worth it, though. <laughs> Good shit, man. Good shit. I like it. <laughs> Hey, um, I am incredibly sorry, um, but I'm going to have to interrupt for a second. Um, I hope you're, I'm saying your name right. Agalia Asis or Agaliasis. Sorry. Uh, donated $15, mate. I am so sorry that I missed out on that. I was just way too, too focused. Um, but thank you very much for the donation. It's, it's a huge, huge help. So thank you, mate. Thank you very much. Okay, at least death is gone. No, nope, he's back. <laughs> oh, because I suppose he just reloaded my last game. So my stamina gain isn't as intense now. Because I was wearing that weapon that's a bit high, too high a level for me, um, it kind of duped me. So maybe we'll, uh, we'll approach this one a little bit differently this time, huh? <laughs> No, you prick. All right, you can loot these chests again. They uh, usually have decent stuff in them. Now here, instead of going into that door, which you actually, I think you need a void key at a point to get into, we're gonna head down this way instead. Watch out for these gargoyles, or actually they're harpies. They can actually knock you over the edge, which you do not want. Don't do it, buddy. Don't do it! She poisoned me. Good shit. Uh, often this item can be, I think, um, it's a decent, yeah, matte robe. Also, there's one of those quest items that we were talking about before. So, pretty good for experience. Oh, I'm gonna risk it for that item. I'll see what it is. Winter's time. The other one is the matte robe, and I think it's a decent robe for, um, Decent robe for your uh, mages or sorcerer class. Okay, so if you continue going down, you'll actually fight a minotaur and he's he's tough as nails, so don't bother with it. Instead, we're going to come out here, which is on the second level, and we're going to head straight across into those doors there. Ignore these doggies. And this is the arena which uh, Luna was talking about before using the um, Luna was talking about before about using the uh, fiendish e essence here to get special fights. This is actually if you're a high enough level, this is actually a good place to farm because you can actually every time you go in and out, it'll respawn enemies instantly. So it's actually a really good place to uh, it's a really good place to get more enemies to spawn in. But generally, they're really quite powerful, so you don't want to mess with them too much. So this will be the spot where we can farm, I think, I think, uh, it is, what is it that spawns here? I think it's Bitter Black Weapon Level 2. Uh, I'll just have a quick squizzy at it. Uh, what do we got? Map, the Black Abbey it is called. Um, I'll just have a look at the map and confirm. Uh, the Black Abbey, there it is. Again, on the wiki, because it's awesome. Uh, what items are here? Black Abbey. I think, I think it is chest number nine. It is. It has Bitter Black Weapon level two, possibly. But it can also be Bitter, bitter Black Gear level two. So you're going to have to save it and farm it a little bit if you really want to get it. Also up here, I think these weapons are really quite good as well. Just be careful not to fall off. Oh, Lord Leaf Tonic. That's not too bad, actually. And then you can jump across here for another one. Bit of black novelty too. Not too bad at this stage. Blip. Jump down. More items and stuff here. None of these are all that fantastic. But yeah, they can help. There's actually... You can farm a place here. I believe you can get diamonds from it as well. Which are pretty good for upgrading weapons later on. I think this spot here has diamonds in them. Possibly. 
frozen holy water, not a big deal. But although it doesn't look like there's anything, I think there's corpses there that'll get re uh, that'll get animated soon. I think so. Try and sneak around them if you can't defeat them. Um, just skirt around the edges. You should be fine. There's more gathering spots here. The gathering spots here are actually pretty good. They give pretty good items. But what we want to do is get right here. And then we're going to save it. Now, the beauty of this place is, and why it's so good to farm early, early on, is because that you don't need the God's Bane to farm it efficiently. So this chest here will always have a good piece of armor in it every single time. Uh, there we go. We got Crimson Plate, which is actually a really good piece for the fighter. Um, uh, we can't... Can we look at it right now? Yeah, it's actually a really good piece for the fighter. I'll give you a look at the stats, actually. But this place, that particular chest there can drop quite a few different things. It can drop Crimson Armlet, Crimson Plate, Golden Lion Helm, Golden Lion Padding, uh, Philosopher Robes, and Ro Royal Mantle. So really good stuff for the start of the game that you, it, that you can get there. So you can either save there if you really want to get a particular armor from there. But the chest we want is actually here. So we'll save it again, just double check, make it easier anyway. And then what we're going to do is open it up and see what we get. Bit of black gear. See, I don't want the bit of black gear. So what I'm going to do, because I just saved my game, I'm just going to jump over the edge. And that's pretty much God's Baning without the God's Bane. Now we just go to retry and instead of us going all the way back to the menu and reloading our game and quitting without saving and all that, we're brought straight back in front of this chest again. Gear again, and then you just jump off the edge. Now the weapons are pretty rare, so it, it may take quite a few tries to get it, but generally it's not too hard. So yeah, and the bitter black weapon level two is gonna be amazingly good for like the entire main game. You could use these things. They're really pretty crazy. Yeah, really, really crazy. So, yeah, you gotta look out. Uh, gear 2 as well. I uh, Gear, I particularly, I don't find all that useful, the gear. Especially if you got the Rings of Perseverance, then your two ring slots are pretty much taken up anyway. So, you won't be using too many gears anyway. Whoops. <laughs> I don't want to kick it. Hopefully we can get a bit of black weapon. I'm going to try a couple of times. We'll see. But if not, you know the basics of it anyway. I don't know if I actually picked up a lift stone. There we go. Bit of black weapon level two. I'm over encumbered, but did I bring a lift stone? <laughs> lucky. Lucky. Anyway, once you've got that, you can lift stone out. Um, and then you just found a good way to farm Bitter Black Weapons Level 2. And what you do is just you sleep for three to seven days. Um, I can't remember the actual number. But once you do that, that chest will respawn. But our shortcut will still be open. So all we have to do is take that shortcut back down and uh, loot that weapon again. So you don't have to do any fighting, nothing. It's uh, perfect. It's great. Excuse me. Uh, let's see if we can purify it. No. One of the big drawbacks of this is that if you don't have Risk Rift Crystals, it's very expensive on Risk Rift Crystals. As you can see, we can't even purify it. So, um, yeah, definitely make sure you put your pawn into the um, into the Rift, the Rift Stone or blah, 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 and make sure you've been starting to farm those Rift Crystals. But... Um, I don't know if anyone's still watching or interested, um, apart from Luna. Um, is there any other questions you have concerning that at all? I think that's a pretty good, I say basic introduction. Um, I think that covers most of it for Bitter Black Isle. Of course, that's not the way to finish the entire Bitter Black Isle. There's still two more main bosses, but I don't want to go too far into it at all. So, yeah. Oh, there's that resting bench that Luna was saying. If you rest there, apparently it can reset as well. So there you go. You don't have to go back all the way back to Carcidius. Carcidius? Whatever.
Anyway, well, it looks like we're not getting too much activity in the chat. It seems to be rather dominated right now. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's that. I don't know if this is the best way to do this particular thing, but I thought I always like to try and make my guides... Um, I always try and make my guides... If I can't do it myself and I, I can't consistently do it myself, then I won't do it. Um, I won't put up a guide on it. So I, I often like to prove that I can do it myself just to prove that you guys can do it. And it's not really by purpose, but most of the time I am incredibly inefficient at what I do. I don't think I do things the most efficient way. I don't do it with the best equipment. I can't tell you every little detail about every little thing. But I know what I do works and I like to prove that they actually work and you can see me doing it in the guides. Because I know there's quite a few guides out there that go, oh, just do this, this and this. And then it's like, yeah, but you have to have the skill level of a major league gamer or you have to have intimate knowledge of it or blah, blah, blah. So hopefully these type of videos kind of give you the tools you need to do um, exactly what I've just done. So, yeah. I hope that was useful to at least a couple of people that will watch this video. But uh, yeah, anyway, I had fun doing it. So yeah. And uh, I think that's about it. It is one minute to midnight here. So I think I'm going to wrap it up there. But thank you guys for all the... Um, Thank you guys for all the input and stuff and uh, all the extra little bits of advice. Hopefully you caught all that stuff that was going on in the si on the side because I I didn't catch any of it. I was too busy talking at you to uh, <laughs> to notice. But um, have we got him in chat here? I'm very sorry if I'm pronouncing your uh, name long wrong, but Agaliasis. Agaliasis, I believe, is the name. Thank you very much for the $15 dono donation. It, it is huge, mate. You're probably, that's probably more than this video will make in its entire lifetime. So thank you very much, guys. Um, but I will be doing a lot more guides on uh, Dragon's Dogma, a lot more consumable ones, easier ones to uh, digest. And uh, hopefully you guys can join me for then. But otherwise, I'll be coming back for a normal stream tomorrow and we'll be continuing with our Dragon's Dogma playthrough. Uh... If you did like this video, please leave a thumbs up. If you got any comments or suggestions, then leave them in the comment section below. And if you haven't subscribed already, then please do so. This has been Lemon Eating Cow. See you guys. Have a good one. Oh, Moo as well. I think I meant to say Moo. Yeah, Moo. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs>